bring them back down to who they are, period. And then from there, hockey becomes actually what it should be. The rink then becomes a sanctuary again, not, not this place of stress because it's your whole identity isn't riding on that rink. Right. And, uh, you know, and, and then, then hockey becomes the best part of your day. Right. That was Peter Russo. And this is the next ship podcast. All right, welcome to episode 56 of the Next Shift Podcast. Hope everyone had a great weekend. I am riding solo this week, your host, Sean Coffey, bringing you a one-on-one interview as well. Uh, Last week, I had the pleasure of recording a conversation with Peter Russo, a guy I followed on social media for a while, but hadn't really had the chance to get to know outside of uh, a very interesting uh, but brief intro call. Uh, I knew I wanted to have him on this podcast because he's someone... who I would say is very difficult to put into one single box, and that's a quality in people that I really appreciate. But just for the sake of context, heading into this conversation, I would describe Peter as a mentor slash coach for hockey players that takes a holistic approach to helping clients become more conscious and aware of the things we know, but we don't know that we know. That might not make sense yet, but hopefully it will after listening. Um, Peter has experience as a collegiate player at Southern New Hampshire University. He's been a prep school coach, uh, head coach at uh, Buckingham, Brown and Nichols, and a college assistant coach at both Providence College and at Babson College. He now works with clients at a number of different levels, including NHL mainstays and rising stars, but he isn't a coach that you are going to seek out to help you with your skating or shooting. He's going to help you connect the dots across all areas of your life, outside of hockey, in hockey, because as you will hear in our conversation, it is all connected. Uh, Here are some of the highlights of why I think people will enjoy this conversation. Peter helps players get back in touch with why they play and why it matters. He helps athletes wrestle with why the stories they tell themselves can make all the difference. And Peter and I both share the perspective that sports psychology has somewhat become too watered down with buzzwords and cliches. Um, And he and I both share an interest, um, a renewed interest, I guess you could say, in depth psychology and how we can connect with ancient archetypes and these grand narratives of the past that we see show up in movies and in books and how understanding those stories can bring meaning to an athlete or anyone's present situation, good or bad. Uh, So never thought I'd be using those words in an intro of a hockey podcast, but we do go deep and wide in this conversation. And I think the biggest takeaway for anyone listening will be the importance of having interests outside of hockey. Because the more knowledge or discipline or passion uh, that we can get in different fields to become a more well-rounded person, the more we'll be able to see things from a different perspective, which can only help in reaching whatever goals we have in hockey or in life. So here it is, my one-on-one conversation with Peter Russo. And at this point, it should be no surprise to anyone that this episode is again brought to you by our sponsor at Sandland Logistics. Sandland Logistics is a family-owned nationwide truckload brokerage team that's been in business for over 30 years. Contact Sandland Logistics to manage your dedicated, expedited, and specialized trucking needs from point A to point B, providing excellent customer service, 24-7 availability, capacity, and reliability. Let them overperform for you today by reaching out to info at sandlandlogistics.com or by phone 860-687-6940. All right, Peter Russo, thank you for coming on the Next Shift Podcast. Long time coming. <laughs> Thanks for having me. I'm, uh, it's been marked my calendar since, since I know. you brought it up. Well, so I came across your... Um, Instagram profile probably about a year ago started watching your videos and what you were posting about Um, I'm sure to a lot of people it goes way over their head Um, but to the ones that get it uh, I say I think you're not afraid to say a lot of the things that people are thinking or at least don't know that they're thinking and then when they see you um, talk about some pretty deep ideas 
and, and apply and connect them to hockey, um, light bulbs go off. And so okay. just for our listeners, um, Peter's based uh, outside of Boston, like myself, he has coached um, in prep school at uh, Providence College, Babson College, and now working one-on-one with different clients um, in a variety of different domains. So there's obviously the hockey piece, but like I said, there's this life piece and philosophical piece and psycho- psychology, psychological piece, right, that are all blended together. And just for context, I think a lot of times – on this podcast, we sometimes get stuck in the trap of thinking where a life after hockey podcast in the sense of what career should you get into? How can you use certain skills from playing to translate into quote unquote real world? But I think at the crux of it, it's a reflective podcast about hockey and the things that can be drawn from the game when you're playing and when you're done playing. And so Peter's definitely very reflective guy. We're going to try to keep this on the rails. It'll be really easy to go off the rails. We've talked once before for like 90 minutes and on the rails, off the rails, but it was awesome. And so I'm going to just say one thing and then we can let it rip. But I think what you do for people that follow you and that know you and that hopefully our audience can come to understand is you remind people of why they play hockey and where the joy can be found and how hockey can be a canvas for your development as a person towards actualizing yourself. People are going to be listening to this thing. Geez, I didn't, I haven't heard you talk like this ever. Sean. <laughs> but anyway, it's something I've been thinking a lot about. Like when things get hard and hockey will inevitably always get hard and there will be obstacles that you need to come back to center in, in the joy and why you're playing. And you don't just play to get the puck into another team's goal or you don't just play because you love the sound of skates carving the ice. Like that's a very romantic idea. Right. I think you remind people and your clients why they play. Yeah. And I would say, well, cause in the, the funny part is, it's like, you know, cause if you do the math, it's like how often are you actually on the ice in your life? Like you, even during the peak of your career. So it's like, you know, let's say you're a pro and you're 20 years old you leave the, the rink at 12, say you have, what do, what do you do with the rest of your day? Right. And so it's like, you can, it's easy to say, well, I'm a hockey player, but it, you know, and I, I did this, uh, I did this sort of at a, my first year out of college at a pre prep school seminar. Uh, it was me and Jeremiah McCarthy who's Belmont Hill coach who was a great guy. Um, awesome guy. It was my first, I was representing Brooks and, uh, I did a, um, you know, we, we had to, supposed to talk about the school, but I hadn't been there yet, so I didn't know much about it. So I just, I got brought note cards and pens, and I had all the kids put, um, you know, I am a, and a blank line and fill it in. And I said, you know, and after they were done, I said, how many of you filled it in with hockey player? And every single hand went up, For, you know, 47, 40 kids that are in seventh, eighth grade, right? You know, and again, serious hockey players, right? I met Braden Doyle uh, at that camp who I've worked with since he, he was drafted by LA, I believe, um, going to BU. Um, I met him when he was 13 at that camp, but anyways, it's then like, well, okay, how can you be a hockey player when you're in line at the grocery store? And it's like, hmm, well, I guess I don't really know. It's like, well, so, so you can't really live it out, right? It's, 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 it's actually impossible to live that out. So therefore your identity becomes really a, upholding a perception of what you think that might look like to the outside. Right. So, you know, so you just sort of flip it to, um, you know, your name. And then I said, put three lines and put adjectives and verbs, right? Cause you can live those out. And like you said, everyone, you know, we, when we look back at hockey playing, right. You know, and I'm, I'm sure, you know, we, we always look back at it with probably a distorted lens of whether of what it was like, right. It's like, you know, it's a, the season's the worst part. It's a gr- it's a grind. You're usually typically uh, chronically nervous. Cause you're, you know, you want to do well, like, you know, players, right. But, you know, we glorify, oh, you know, miss playing. But it's like, do you really, though? Because it was kind of it was kind of a nightmare day to day, aside from a, the few moments of, you know, when you have success and like those moments sort of string you along. But so it's like, is that sustainable? Right. So it's like, you know, I, I say Tuesdays define your life because mo- 75 percent of life is Tuesday. Right. So it's like and it's the same with hockey. So it's like, well, 
you can make what you know let's so let's start build some sort of identity tree right because it's like you need something internally to sort of that, that that's that's detailed but simple not vague because it's like well i'm a hard worker it's like well what the hell does that mean right so it's like that that's not good enough either but you gotta start somewhere and you narrow it down so i would say i would say at and it's kind of funny because it's like we're talking really at the i would say the most at the most fundamental level of anything it's really um I bring them back down to bring them back down to who they are, period. And then from there, hockey becomes actually what it should be. The rink then becomes a sanctuary again, not not this place of stress because it's your whole identity isn't riding on that rink. Right. And, uh, you know, and, and then then hockey becomes the best part of your day. Right. Um, but like you said, it's like it's more so it's not necessarily things they they haven't thought. And, and I had a really interesting conversation um, and I won't use specific names, uh, but with someone it's who it's, it's their draft year this year coming in July. Is it, did they move it? Right. Uh, it's July. Right. Ironically, it's like, I don't pay attention much to that stuff, you know, <laughs> but so it's, it's a, you know, you know, when you're, when you're a prospect, you know, it obviously, <laughs> um, it, so you therefore have to live an out of proportion life in a lot of ways. Right. Because, you know, any, any extreme yields an extreme in a different direction. So there's their development as humans is a uh, has to has to they have to make adaptations in different sorts of ways um that maybe that that they're that they, but they never then ha- uh, get to go back and sort of like do go back to tying up some knots they didn't get to based off the you know being really good at a certain thing too young right so you know what uh you know we it's funny because it's like you ask it's like well what would you what do you do between four and six typically in a day and you know, he's like, uh, no, I think I don't really know. He's like, no, I think what I don't really know what I do with my life. <laughs> and, uh, but it, you know, he said it kind of, you know, funny. And it, it was, it was like you said, more of a light bulb of like, oh, I can actually like this. There's things I, I could decide to do things like, like I can make conscious decisions. There's this whole world that I could in explore, right. That all at the end of the day funnels back into me, which and you're the one that plays hockey. So it makes you better at hockey. And it makes you better at learning, which makes you better at getting better at hockey. So it's like it's an upregulating loop that that does not have a limit and does not have any strings attached. Therefore, it makes it back. It, it becomes why you play why you play as a kid because it's not you don't play hockey as a kid because you love necessarily the game. You love this. You love the state of mind you're occupying when you're playing. That's why people like anything when they tell you their favorite uh, subject in school. They're really telling you their favorite teacher. Um, because their teacher sets a certain environment. It's not really the, it's not the subject. It's, it's a state of mind they occupy. So it's really just bringing people back to being able to just see clearly from a very, um, from almost from having no glasses on at all. Right. And almost starting over so that they, they can actually have a life that, that, that they feel they're a part of. Right. And you could probably test this. So you almost feel like as a, as a high level player, it's like the more you go, it's like, you almost feel like you're not a part of that experience, right? You're part of the evaluation almost. That's like what, so it's, it's a tough, it's tough to think, you know, what you, what you guys do in terms of talking about life after hockey becomes so important because there is no life during hockey in a lot of ways. Right. Yep. It's, right. So it's like, yep. so it's, um, yeah, I'll, I'll let you jump in there. Well, we had uh, Angelo Esposito on this podcast and I had known his story. I knew him as year year younger than me, but um, I mean, written up in Sports Illustrated kind of as the next one at 15 years old and <laughs> flipped in the draft to late first round, dealt with some injuries, uh, never made it. Yeah. And just the struggle that someone in that position goes through because their identity was so tied up to that of a hockey player. I don't think you can understate uh, how difficult that is. But, you know, he said the closer I was getting physically and age wise to my ultimate goal, mentally connection wise, I was just getting further and further away. And um, I I can relate to that a little bit. And I think, again, I'm reminded every week when we do this podcast, when I get reflective, um, and I think that's a good thing to get reflective, but I I remember, geez, you you really do forget why you played, you lose the joy. And I think just generally, as we become adults in society today, we've forgotten what it means to play. And, you know, being a, a new dad, I have a two-year-old daughter, and so you play so much more. <laughs> and you kind of are reminded of, of the lightness and the fun 
and the joy of doing random things. Yeah. And, you know, the, I, I'm sure you've studied, you know, pl- the importance of the play circuitry in our brains. It's a different circuit. Right. Um, it's, it's completely separate from the executive function and the, um, the op, the opposing more re- reptilian fight or flight function. And we've mm-hmm. evolved with that circuit being there forever. And so, I mean, we go, we go down, down that <laughs> path, but I wanted to prompt you with this is that I, I liken it a lot to relationships because kids fall in love with their sport what, for whatever reason, even if it is for the wrong reasons, even if it is for the external validation, there's something that pulls them in and there's a romantic relationship with it. Just yep. like in with a romantic partner and there's a honeymoon uh, face for sure. And then it gets hard and you have to quote unquote work at it, but you actually have to do the opposite. Yeah, um, exactly. <laughs> so um, I had thought of that this morning, thinking about what we wanted to to talk about. But it goes back to living, enjoy, l- truly loving, and and um, what you do to give it meaning. Like, why are you doing this? What makes it meaningful? Right. So, so I would say, you know, that's well, those are two great points to bring it to, again to set back to one having a child of your own. That puts a lot in perspective, right? And, uh, you know, and this is um, a Nietzsche quote, but man's maturity consists of regaining the seriousness one had when a child at play. Right. So that, that's so that's sort of like so it's, it's not to say, um, you know, that that middle part of 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 a feeling like all of a sudden it's like, you know, the honeymoon phase over now, it just feels hard. It's like this thing that I was great, but now it's so difficult. Like that's part of it. It's like, you know, you can't you can't unclutter nothing. You have to make a mess first. So it's, you know, I I sort of use Bruce Lee's three stages of learning. A punch is just a punch. A punch is more than a punch. In the third phase, a punch is just a punch. So that middle phase is so important, but everyone, a lot of people get stuck in that one because it takes a lot of faith to get to leave it because you're, you don't, you don't, you have to have, a, there's something you have to trust that isn't anything you can put your finger on that the ability is going to be there if you let go. Right. And you think, you know, so it, and, and part of that is part of it is a fear that if it is there and you're, then you'll, be great. And that's, people are afraid of that, obviously, um, in a lot of ways, because when you're great at anything, things come with that and you can't, you can't dismiss that part. And if, if you're not prepared for what comes with, with every, whatever you do, right. Then, then all of a sudden it takes away from what you're doing and you might sabotage yourself in ways you don't even know you're doing. So being aware of, you you know, you said the word reflection a couple of times. So PRS, which is, you know, uh, my company, it stands for practice, reflect, simplify. So the reflection part is so important it's, and it's, um, you know, and that is when, so, and you just do that and you just keep doing that in a circle. But in, in that circle is the same circle. It's just, a, it's always uh, maturing and evolving. But um, what would happen, like you said, it's like um, what draws the kids in, what it doesn't even matter the reason. I don't, they, whatever a kid is interested in doesn't, don't care why. Like whether it's because they want, you know, their older brother likes it and they want to impress them, it doesn't matter. They have, they, all of a sudden they have somewhere to displace the, their, their, their ego. Like, and I don't mean ego as like, um, I mean it more in a psych, psychological term of their like sort of conscious self, like, right. So it gives them a place to then to experience like living, right. Because they're, because they're engaged in it, right. Because if you're not engaged in it, you, you, you're not doing anything real. So it almost doesn't matter the platform as long as you have one, which is why to me uh, encouraging any any interest that kids have is important because it, again it doesn't matter as long as they're, if they're engaged. Then you you know in the reflection part you can then look at well why is it I'm in, why is it I'm engaged in this and and you you can go one or two ways with it and you, that that's when you make more of a decision to then make it to take that more of a that commitment step like like a relationship right like you said it's like same with hockey. It's like, well, there's a honeymoon. And then it's like, well, the next part is going to be hard, but will the commitment will yield the meaning, but it's a conscious decision to make a commitment. It's not just, it's not just momentum. And that's when you, that's, you know, that's when things go south. It's when, when, when you start making decisions just out of momentum. Um, right. So, you know, because the honeymoon phase, just like the class people, you, you like it the most because you like yourself the most because you're in love. Right. So, but now, but that isn't, so, but if you look at it from that angle, if to be in love requires something else, well, then that's a pretty tough, that's a tough thing. And that, that will wear off. And actually biologically, 
you know, love is meant to last for seven years. Cause that's about roughly how long it would take a, a kid to be able to fend for themselves in the wild. Like, you know, on a biological level, so that's, a, you know, I'm not making that up. <laughs> like I'm not about, I'm not about six. <laughs> well, so, so, but then what the, to me, the con the, the next level of, of how you have, you know, real relationships, like love is not something that you give or get. It's something you are yep. right. So therefore it can never be, it can never be taken from you. Just say, the same way the game can never be taken from you. Right. Like now your status in the game may, but the, you can like, if you want, if you and I want to right now, be like, yeah, screw this podcast, but let's like, let's meet at the park and play street hockey. If we really, you know, it's like, that's still, it's the same sort of thing. So yeah. if you can occupy that space with no, with a maturity where you can then have the executive function in a, in a, you know, a committed level of w where there's more than just you relying on you, right. To, to, to show up and perform then that's, so now you have this, the struggle part, but with the passion. And you need, and if you have both of those, who, boom, mm -hmm. energy, synergy. Yeah. If you only have the struggle, or if you only have the passion, right? It, 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 it's, it's turbulent. Yeah, and it's like the the mainstream, uh, the mainstream narrative that you hear a lot about is like embrace the suck, like like the things that are hard. If it's not hard, it's not worth it. But we're missing like that next level. Like, well, why? <laughs> and we, I think you help people get to just that next level of why. And I remember, look, it's no secret. I talk about it on this podcast a lot. I was I was a complete mental midget, um, had nothing between the ears and just ran out of gas because you can't. I think when you're young, you can um, every problem is just a hammer, right? Yeah. Or, or every problem is a hammer and a nail. Yeah. As you get older, you need the the problems become more complex and you don't you need to develop the tools to solve problems in life and in, in hockey as you get older. And so there's a learning that needs to happen. And I think, again, I, I mentioned it to you is when I was in that, those moments, I didn't have the language or the lens you could say to look at things in a different light. Right. Like, Oh, because now I was out in St. Louis uh, where I played for half a season last week, you know, driving on the same highway, driving towards where the old rink used to be. And I thought to myself, like what you said, this was in the moment, an anxiety, just crippling experience. Like you're worried all the time is, are things going to work out? Right. But then you look back at it and you think, what, what an adventure. Right. And that's what people are looking for. All of us is adventure and meaning. And so I, I think what you do, and, and I, I'd like you to maybe just expand on this and you don't need to mention names is I think you help your clients find the adventure and the meaning and the shit that they're going through. Right. Would that be fair to say? Yeah. It, yeah, exactly. Uh, and I would say part of it is I, I make it pretty obvious that it's like, this isn't, it's not a hockey specific thing that, that it's not unique to you playing hockey and it's not unique and it's not something I don't do either. It's every, it's part of the human experience. So it's like, if we're to, if we're to subscribe to the notion that the human experience is optimal, which I think is the only spot to start at, then, then it contains everything, which means you don't. So, so you're, you know, the, it's not, nothing is necessarily good or bad, right? It's just, it, it's something to play out and therefore you experience it. And, you know, and like you said, it's like, you know, you, and what you said that, that actually, when we talked last, what you said about, you didn't have the language that really struck a chord with me. Um, and this is why these things are so great because like it's not and this is kind of it's it's similar these are similar conversations of how it goes about when i'm talking to a player right it's like it's not like a like i learned too like it's like that like that that was like a little i would call it like a thread point that like unraveled the whole thing i'm like that's that's such a good that like the the use of the language of saying you didn't quite have the language it's like i knew that but that like saying it that way makes much a lot of sense it's that that's what it is we, we, so I, I started to focus on that more in terms of having guys, um, since we talked even more so having them speak, because think if you really think about it, it's like, you don't really ever have to formulate or speak things that aren't like, you know, a presentation for school or like an interview. And it's like, um, I always, I kind of have to joke on the phone a lot. It's like, look, I'm, I'm not Bob McKenzie. And, uh, this isn't a Bob McKenzie interview. Like, you know, you don't have to, and they kind of laugh and then, then they'll start, I'll press them on the story. And then all of a sudden it's like, a simple story is like way more interesting than they, than like they thought, but they, they think that no one's interested in that part. 
It's like, no, that's, I don't give a fuck. Sorry. I don't don't have to worry about your, your, you know, the hockey part is like, who cares? Like, that's an interesting story there. It's like, you're leaving out, you're leaving out the juice because it's like, you think we we try to streamline life and bullet point life. And it's like, why? (laughs) Where are we going? Right. It's like, like, you know, it's like, what is the rush? It's like, like you said, like, so you're driving on that highway and it's like, again, and this is kind of from catcher in the rye, which, and, you know, it was a, my mission statement essentially when I was in college was, was, you know, this was similar. And that obviously develops too, because it's, that one's a, it's a little, uh, uh, in the sense of, you know, what Holden and a lot of people related to Holden Caulfield. And again, it's, it's a, it's a good thing, but then you have to be educated on to, to take the progression on it. Cause you, that's not, it's not exactly what you want to stay at. Right. But it's a, it, it's a place to start, but it's, you know, he says essentially, you know, I'd like to be the catcher in the ride. It's all, all I would like to do. You know, essentially what kids are about to fall off a cliff before they do, you just grab them. And uh, that, so that has always been ingrained in me, maybe because I don't have brothers. I, I'm in the middle of two sisters. Um, I, I don't know exactly, but um, you know, that I've been coach. I've been coaching since I was for over 10 years. I've since, since, since I was in college, I've been coaching. Um, you couldn't pay, like I like coaching more than playing. And I knew that as a player, um, like, you know, I couldn't wait to stop playing cause I didn't like, I am lazy and not, I'm not very coachable. <laughs> um, but so, but anyway, so go back to the, the St. Road in St. Louis, you, that's, that's a great reflection point that if you weren't aware of it, you would have missed because in the sense of the second time around, because it's like you, the road's not different, like you said, but you're different, right? Like a museum, like a book it's it so once you're once you realize that it's like well how many other things do i look at from a, from potentially a limited lens and just just even considering that opens up it just it sort of just sets you back a bit it, it makes it it makes things t- it takes off the unnecessary tension of certain things and it gives you a little more faith in the unknown because it's like well you cannot you're it, the unknown part, like I'm going to make, like things aren't going to go perfectly, but if they, but if they did, that would kind of suck because then you wouldn't be able to go back to St. Louis and have an experience that second time, which I'm sure is powerful for you. Well, that's exactly it. It's, it seems like people say, Hey, you can't change the past, but you actually can. And you do, and you change the past by the story that you apply to it. And I catch myself on this podcast saying a lot, hey, embrace your story. That's you. That's your brand. I come at it from like a marketing standpoint um, for athletes. But it's like from a psychological standpoint, your story, the unique path that you took to get to where you are today, not only is that your brand, the story that you're owning and telling yourself is actually how you're thinking of the past. Yeah. Um, and like I said, I, I change the past a lot when I reflect and I think back and I think, wow, that was so awesome. Yeah, I, I blew a huge opportunity. I blew this opportunity. But, man, that gives me pretty good perspective uh, now. Right. Well, and so you can make the arguments like and that's why it's like you can never mess it up. Mm-hmm. Even if, so it's like even if you blew an opportunity without blowing that opportunity, you wouldn't realize that you blew an opportunity and therefore wouldn't have had the experience yet. So it's like it's it's. So ironically, it's like, and that's kind of effectively changing the past because without that, without going through that, like really, like when you really feel like all you, you're, you're stuck inside of your, your, your head, right? Like yep. as, it's like every single thing happening is happening directly to you. And there's nothing that, and that's, it's, it's so hard to get out to see yep. from over that. And once, but once you do, it gives you this whole story, this, this, this complex story that isn't just, you know, sunshine and, and rainbows, right? It's like, this, this really, you know, you went, you know, you went through these really unseeable trials and, and, and angst and, and uncertainty. And you, re- now you have that to reflect on and simplify. And, you know, that's a simplified, which then is just, that's the maturity part where now it's like, now you're, you're in a perfect position to now raise kids. <laughs> like, cause now it's like, yeah. Cause it's like, so it, it's, it's a weird thing, but it's almost like, it sort of is in line with a punch is more than a punch phase. Right. So it's like, but um, I think what, what hap- what's happening with sports is it's gone too far in um, it's gone too long where that, like to me, that phase should, should happen a little sooner. And, and, and then there should be, like you said, someone should help you with the language. Yeah. So you can communicate. That right? just made me think of something though. Like when you, when people get into the real world or they get into business 
corporate culture is always pulling from other domains. So, you know, um, hey, let's teamwork. So we're pulling in from like the Navy SEALs. I know, you know, Jamie Rice, right? He's big into like what can be learned from these military team building concepts or discipline right. and um, high performers. And I think that 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 does exist in sports. But you mentioned books that you've read or or continue to read and you're applying them to like the arts or sports. Right. So the catcher in the ride. Um, Victor Frankel, Man's Search for Meaning. When they assigned Catcher in the Ride to me in seventh grade, I don't even remember if I read it. I yeah. couldn't really, I know it was assigned. I don't know. I would read that differently today. But think if if in school they they really engage kids to read things like Man's Search for Meaning. And, you know, you hear quotes like, when we are no longer able to change a situation, we are challenged to change ourselves. Mm-hmm. And just thinking about that, okay, well, hey, I've been healthy scratch for seven games. Um, it might not just because the coach hates me. Like, yeah. where's the opportunity to change myself? So I, I've just come to understand that it's so, yes, pro athletes and anyone who's a high achiever needs to be singularly focused, but that doesn't mean blocking off other domains of knowledge. Right. Be singularly focused on taking everything you learn and applying it to that one thing. I'm on, can I just say I'm on a I'm on a roll today. I, this could have gone off. It might be off the rails, but I'm. No, it's not at all. Like I'm it's actually really coherent. I'm, <laughs> I'm learning a lot. <laughs> no, it's, it's great, man. Yeah. I knew this would be good. You know well, what I mean by that? Like, synergy, though. Yeah, it's, yeah. You know, it, it's a language. It's it's things you. So what the what this podcast is right now, and, and this is what. So when you, for instance, like when you read Catching Ryan Middle School or when it was assigned, what that should have been, right? And because and, and this is where the art of teaching comes in. Where both of us are the teacher and the student right now, in the sense that all we did is create a container to um, use language that we of things that we already know exist, but we haven't really we haven't put out there yet in a way that right. And but you, when you do, you notice it. it's like wow, I'm kind of on a roll right now because this makes sense. And it's not because it's not you didn't pull it out of your ass. It's so actually, true. There's things and, you thought about without thinking about in lots of ways and lots of there's a lots of cross you know dots yes. connecting and you're pulling from here and there. And it's like you have to have a container to do that and. I don't know. I don't think school does a good enough job of of before they give out the assignment, like really making the making the, the point that it's like, look, the point of this assignment is not the assignment. It's a container for yeah. kind of what we're talking about, right? So they don't even make it compelling to do the freaking assignment or to read the book. And that's why, like, I do I do art I do art assignments with players, mm-hmm. literally. <laughs> you want I, well, you really like because it's uh, you know an alchemic uh, sort of mantra, but as as above, so below. And I have them draw a line through the sheet of paper. <laughs> the alchemist. All right. Like unreal, unreal. And uh, it's fun. Like I'm, I'm, I use alchem- alchemy sort of metaphorically um, because to me, it's, that's what essentially I would, I joke and say, that, well, that's real. That's what I, mean. I am. I'm an, al- I'm an alchemist in the sense that I blend, I blend the things that should go together yes. together um, because it all goes together, which is much different than throwing everything in a bag. Right. Like it's, 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 it goes together with timing and proportion. And usually your two, usually your two most dominant traits are, are always polar opposites. Mm -hmm. And your biggest challenge is usually like something that you think you're horrible at. And it's kind of funny that you say, you know, like as a player back then, it's like you were, uh, you know, so, um, you had nothing between the ears and no language, just really, you know, just, you couldn't, you, you essentially couldn't keep up with, the speed of your own fear in, in, in very, anger. very red brain, very, um, uh, aggressive. Right. Um, you know, well, so, so, so what do you, so it's fun. Now, now that's why it's great though. Cause it's yeah. like, so you see that as a weakness then, but it's like, look what you're doing now. You're literally yeah. doing it. You're, 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 you have a reflective podcast. Mm-hmm. Where you're yeah. That's, and, and I, I didn't realize until I was completely done playing hockey. When I, when I was really done playing hockey, I picked up the guitar. And I think I picked it up uh, for attention at St. Lawrence, right? Like it's, it's when I real I played the guitar before, but I was like, you know what? I'm going to go on stage. <laughs> I'm going to sing in front of people. I did that. Yeah. No one knows I did that. This was 10 years ago. That's so cool. I'll, I'll, I'll throw it up. But, That's and then, so cool. then I stopped playing guitar. I don't, I don't even own a guitar anymore, but it was, I never knew the need or the ability to be creative. And that was a skill in hockey that I did not have. I couldn't create. I was just very D to D. Where's my winger? Oh boy. If he's not there, I look like shit. Um, 
And I'm figuring this out now. And that's the great thing about podcasts. I think why they're so powerful and educational is because we're not just, we actually didn't even have an agenda. Some of our worst interviews were the, you know, me, Ryan and George are like, all right, we're going to say, we're going to talk and talk through these bullets yeah. here. We're just contending and, and kind of, like you said, weaving and learning as we go. But I think people can see where we're trying to bring it. Right. Um, well, think about the, like anything I, when I listen to something, so what I would say in regard to this, it's like, it's almost like this is using uh, technology in a human way because it's mm-hmm. this is no different as if we were, you know, across the table having coffee, right? Like it's the same, yeah. it has the same feel, right? Whereas as soon as it feels like it only could happen because of the technology, it's, it's not gripping. And mm-hmm. so if you're listening, it's more like you're, sitting at the table too you're just not you're not talking you're, you're just right. you're listening and, th- and that right. to me is like i i noticed it's funny that you, you say it that way because i that sort of i was thinking about well what it, why do i sort of uh consume the things i consume and that's the things i tend to like things where it's i almost feel like just a fly on the wall in a conversation where there's yeah. no there's not like a conclusion to it right it's like yeah. i don't necessarily know what is even going to be talked about right yeah. because at the end of the day it's like we you know, it's, it's always much better when we, when we arrive at our own answers through living out our own questions. So let's go here from there. So let's yeah. go here. So I had a professor on the topic of education and how you learn. I had a, the, my best professor in college, like truly life changed for me. Um, you know, mentor and it was first person that I, I looked at professionally and said, I want to be like him. And when he taught the sales class, he wasn't up there just at a chalkboard writing or reading off the syllabus. It was like he was performing. Yeah. And like, you know, I know we've we've watched uh, or we share a liking of, of Jordan Peterson, a, a Canadian psychologist and his his uh, lectures. And he's up there performing. Like, yeah. do you think when he before class, let's let's talk about preparation and performance. Yeah. Let's talk about the need to prepare, but also like not like not think. Mm-hmm. Like for this podcast, for example, I kind of knew where we were going. I wanted to make sure I was in a good state, but I didn't have things written down. And yeah. so I'm wondering if those, you know, this professor of mine and guys like Jordan Peterson, great teachers or great athletes like Kobe Bryant or, or like they're not thinking. They're not they're not they're not thinking thoughts. You know where I'm going with that. So how do well, take I those, know you're going with it because you yeah. did you're doing it like you, yeah. you, you know, and that's why you're that's why you know, you sort of said yourself, so you, you sort of feel a level of clarity. You didn't. And so let, and then talk about that and then connect it to how I could have done that as a athlete. Right. Oh, exactly. And then, so this is actually what I would say with, so in terms of applying it, this is why, you know, so all these roads end up, it's like, you know, goes right back into hockey. So it's, 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 um, because it's, it's, it's universal because they are in some ways it's a performance. It's, it's an expression. You know, pl- movement is is an expression, right? It, it's our, you know. So if we're to look at everything as, if we're to look at the creative process as as an expression of self within a group, with in the, the ultimate form of that is doing that with with other people, right? With um, so it's because people it, people don't necessarily want to like complete. It's not about like standing out in a way that's like m- separates you from people. People want to be unique, but but within. The, the boundaries of their of their of a team and share that right so what you so what you said is and it's the same with players and it's a hard, it's the hardest part to do but and that's where the, the the faith and the trust of letting go comes in when you when you trust yourself to not have any script in front of you like you said it's like you sort of went into this podcast not like not have it you don't have a list to fall back on of like oh shit like any safety questions because if you did if you even had that list it would it would stunt your 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 sort of your natural process um, in general, because you knew you had that little sort of net there because by doing that, you you're telling yourself, I don't quite trust. I'm not, I'm, I don't trust the unknown and I care about the outcome. Right. Instead of, instead of the, to me, this is more of, you know, it, it's an experience that we're doing. It's just like playing the game. So it's like your preparation. So I just, I, you know, so to make it uh, down to earth hockey wise too, it's, I have them separate planning versus preparation, two different things. Right. So planning is like, you know, that's the infrastructure. Take it, like, get that off your plate as soon as possible. Right. It's like, you know, you know, where like, for instance, like if you're on the road, it's like, you know, 
like figure out the logistics right away in terms of like the itinerary that you have to do for the team stuff and whatnot. So you at least, you know where you need to be and when, right? So, so that's off your mind, right? Um, so you take care that, that, that goes under planning, right? And, uh, infrastructure. So you do that, right? And then, you know, you, leading up and there's, you know, there's, you can have modalities that, that sort of, um, you know, we, I use visualization. I think I would say it's something I'm, I'm, I think there's, I think it's a really untapped field, even though it's, it's, it's like, you know, it's very mainstream, but it's not, I don't, no one understands it properly. You can actually, you can actually, uh, you, I can get better sitting here if I'm taking 10 shots in my mind than someone shooting hundred bucks in their driveway. Because just because because they don't understand the, what the learning process actually is, um, and how the body responds to that. But but anyways, um, so you know you do you, you you tighten up some bolts in the sense of being prepared. So then you trust letting go, come puck drop. Therefore, because because and then once you experience the feeling of not thinking thoughts and executing, then it's like well, I mean you not, nothing exists until observed. So it's like. I now know that exists. So you have to lead them to that experience and it might, and it doesn't happen. Um, right. It, it takes a long time as a problem. And so, um, and I'll give you a hockey antidote and this one I'll, I'll, I, I can, I'll use the name cause it's, it's very hockey specific. So Patrick Harper graduated BU, from BU last year. Um, he's a rookie now, um, in Nashville's organization, he went to Avon farms. Uh, can I, uh, I'm sure you know the name, but he, uh, his senior year at BU, the first weekend of the year, he scored a, a goal, and I'll send it to you. It was just an absolute. It, it was a. It, it was probably I've, like, I've seen this on your uh, your Instagram, like the same. Like, you he did what, a, what what you were doing with him in practice. Well, it, uh, but what he said in a so he said in the uh, text afterwards after the game, he's like, people don't realize it took me it took me three years because that he could execute that shot for three years just not in a game. It took me three years to be able to execute that three times because he executed three times that one weekend. Wow. So it's, it's like bamboo, like bamboo uh, for not for like the first uh, year or so, nothing comes out of the ground, nothing. And then all of a sudden, boom, because that whole time, the whole time um, that year where nothing's happening, it's growing roots down and what down and out. So then when it does once, it's not like it just then grows slowly up. It grows fucking, I'm sorry, massive at once. Um, so it's in bamboo is the most useful plant in the world and the most, you know, uh, it's, in, it has so much utility in so many ways. And I learned that, that from chop wood, carry water, which we read, read at Babson and that book, a lot of the guys really like, and I recommend, I recommend that the hockey players as a start to getting into abstract concreteness because it's, it's, it's easy to apply. Um, well, that, that's the first thing I asked you though, because I've, I work with players regularly, but you work, you've worked with them for longer. You've worked with great players at great programs in college. And my first question to you was, do guys have any idea what the hell you're talking about? Because <laughs> maybe I'm jaded because I think, hey, at, when I was 16, 17, 18, I don't know if I would have grasped it. But you, it, I was very encouraged after talking to you because you were like, oh, yeah, they can get it. You know? <laughs> yeah, because, well, I, think, I mean, because the thing about it from this lens is like, and I'll go back to the thing you said about length, uh, the, just the way you described that you didn't have language, just the way you said that it's like m my, regardless of where my intellect or experience is, that like, that's makes sense. It's all, like anyone could understand that because you've said it in a way that's understanding. But like, if I, let's say this, like in this example, if I have, a, cause because I went through certain things that I'm sensitive to picking up on maybe if a player is going through something similar, mm -hmm. Like if I, even at in at the pro level, if I'm watching an NHL guy who's in a slump or quote unquote fighting the puck, I'm like I get haunted and, and I feel the anxiety. I'm like I know how he feels when this puck yeah. is coming up to him on the wall. Right. And um, my palms start sweating. It's like a visceral thing. Right. And so when I'm wa watching a young kid, where some people would, you know, maybe he's, maybe he's not doing as well, and I, I I'm like, don't tell him to stop thinking. Because he's just gonna be like, "What does that even mean?" Yeah. <laughs> so like, hey, he's gripping the stick too tight. Well, what does that mean? Oh yeah, just simplify your game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, so it, the first thing I would say that makes it why they buy in so quick is because there one, I, I 
I am very anti vague buzzwords. Like to yes. say, for instance, like to say, well, just simplify. It's like, Oh, Oh, thank you. Yeah. Oh, well, why not I think of that? It's like, yeah, no shit. But that's simplification is the hardest. That's why it's the end of the process. It's the hardest part. So it's like, I make it, I sort of bring a sense of relief of like, because usually players come to me, like you said, in, in a state of where there's either they're changing they're you know, um, going to a different level, like moving up a level or they're, they're in some, you know, sort of a, a bubble point in their career, whatever, whatever it's, you, it's, it's, it's never when things are going swimmingly. Right. And, well, I, I know, I know a player you're working with now and, and we don't have to mention his name, but things weren't I mean, going great. Uh, Con Connor, right? Yeah. You know, yeah. Connor, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, things weren't going great for him, but it's like he had, he still maintains the zest. He didn't turn off his social media account. He's right. showing people, he's giving people a look into the, the battle that he's in. Right. He's, he's, uh, highly uh you know when he was coming up the ranks highly ranked prospect and he got sent down to the taxi squad and now he's back he's playing free he's scoring goals he's having fun yeah and um i think that's what you help guys navigate is this is the battle you're in make it fun um because you can't really change anything else yeah well and i would say too it's like so and um yeah like and, and i so connor we talk about all day because i think he he's a He'll end up, you know, five years from now, we'll look back and he'll, he'll be someone that really impacts a lot of, a lot of people. Um, and, but he, but he has that, but he, he wants that, which is, which, which is a, is a higher aim than hockey and hockey falls under that, but you have to, but he didn't, like you said, he didn't quite have the language for that. Um, so we sort of, we connected, uh, you know, he played it with, in New Jersey with uh, with Hayden, which is how we connected, right? So uh, everyone I, I work with is because of someone else I work yep. with. So that's another part, too, of, of it's like, well, because they're being coming in from someone that, you know, they know well and respect, it's like, you know, it's um, right away. It's like, because otherwise it's like, it's like, well, why would anyone work with that guy who looks like a kid who's wearing like a hat, who, does, who doesn't wear the, the, you know, the, well, that's the other thing. I, that's the other thing I want to ask you, but finish that thought. Well, so, yeah, so it's like, so right away, it's like, well, obviously something must be working because otherwise there's, there, there's no meat, there's no tangible grounds to, for him to be doing, working with high level players. Yes. Other, so there, so it's like, what's there? So it's, a, it's it, there's a mystery there, which I, is part of, part of it. Um, I, is part, part of the process is, um, I, I try to make myself not very hockey appearing because I, because it's not hockey. That's ever the problem. When a player is in a slump, it's not hockey. And, and that's, and, and once you realize, you know, and, and I won't get too much into like, you know, like Carl Jung and like, you know, the inner outer world, but it's like, usually it's like, if when you talk to them, it's like they're in a certain, certain slump in hockey, there's something happening in their life that they're not giving enough credit to. Right. They're not like hundred percent. They're not giving the devil it's due. On chapter two, when we bring you on next time, we'll go deep into Carl yeah. Jung. This is, this is, uh, uh, depth psychology 101 that'll be 102 right well and, and that's so yeah and i and, and i think that's it's it's amazing to me that that's not something that is um the correct that should be the curriculum in for any athlete um for anyone like i think i think it's something we all everyone should understand at a certain level and what I, so so we take connor and he because again he's a great example connor played his first angel game when he was 19 and you know, so I started working with him literally, you know, and he had a, his first child January 30th this year. Right. So it's kind of, it's, it's interesting. Cause it's like, well, that brings a lot of perspective too, like having a kid. Right. And you know, um, a lot of people who have with that mindset, they, they forget how it's hard to see how much you've actually done because yeah. like you're so in it. Right. It's like, yeah. you're so hard on yourself. Right. Like, and you're, you're similar. What, why, and, this, and that's why this, this pl platform for you almost uh, acts as sort of how, what I do act as for the players in the sense of just somewhere to put things out to them reflect on, right? Yep. Because, you know, other, otherwise it's like you're, you know, you're, you're critical of yourself, but which is, which isn't a bad thing if, if looked at from a, not from a detached way. So as a player, I, you know, it's all right, here, you're, you're, let's say you are not your thoughts, but that doesn't mean your thoughts don't exist. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you know, if your thoughts are here, Right. And you're here. Well, now you're your thoughts, but you can be here and look at them matter of factly. Right. And now the thoughts. It, it, so it, it doesn't take away the fact that it's difficult. Right. But it makes it it makes it tolerable. And then 
you don't, it takes out some blind spots, right? And it, there becomes, um, and you can actually, there's room. Now you can actually clearly see certain things that are like just hidden in plain sight where it's like, Oh, all right, well, that makes sense. It's like, Oh, you know, like, like, uh, um, I'm, uh, uh, guys will have certain, like, uh, you know, like they'll have like, you know, uh, stomach issues. It's like, Oh, the trade deadline's tomorrow. Oh, Oh, that has nothing to do with it. Like, <laughs> you know, like, um, you know, and it's like, it's so obvious, but when you're in it, you don't, you just don't really connect those dots when you're too close to it. Right. Yep. So I, I sort of, I, I act as almost the subconscious in a lot of ways and I mirror right um, to the player so they can see themselves clearly yep. for better or worse. And with Connor, uh, which was great because, and, and he's been really fun to work with because it's uh he's really interested and in, he, he's just a really curious person. Like, mm-hmm. and without that, and that, that to me is next, the X factor being great. Anything. It's like, you have to be interested in life. Yes. Like, not, like and you don't know why but you, you that's it, that you have to be interested in the unknown but you have to have the alchemist book behind you. Yeah. There's something, there's a, a romantic notion about alchemy. It's like, what is it? Like I need, I, I don't, I want to know, you know, and players have a hard and time. I bet that there are players in the NHL that if you said that to them, they wouldn't really get it, but they are in, they, it's in them. Right. They're, if you push them, if you push them twice on it, then you know. Yeah. That's why I would yeah. say, with, so I would, my suggestion is always use Harry Potter. So you like, uh, make a Harry Potter reference and they'll be like, oh, do you like Harry Potter? They'll always, boys, will, they'll always say like, like, eh, not really. And then yeah. like, you keep going with it um, and keep, you, if you remain excited about it, because like, I, I love Harry, the Harry Potter stories. Uh, well, that, see, that's the crazy thing is I remember my mom got me the Harry Potter books. I remember the one time I sat down and tried to read it. One time didn't pick it up again. Now I still haven't read them, but now because I've listened uh, to this guy, uh, Jordan Peterson, this book yeah. changed my life, but he breaks down what makes Harry Potter universal. Is it in that book? It in, what's that? Is it in that book where he talks about it? It's in, it's in the new one. It's okay. in the, I yeah, got yeah. my mic I, standing I, I, on the other one. Um, there's a whole chapter on it. And when I heard the Harry Potter story and what's in it, it was like, Oh my God, like <laughs> that is so cool. Right. And so I was that, again, I was that kid where I couldn't connect the dots and now everything connects. Well, but, but the other, but now the other part, hard part too is, so now there are, there are, so now Harry Potter's uh, because they're movies and um, you know, everyone, the, the guys, they've all seen the movies, right? Mm-hmm. So it's like, so it's a shorter process. Right. But so, you know, I, I, Mark McLaughlin, who's the captain at BC, we, we, we have a sort of Harry Potter writing joke. Cause it's like a, you know, we were talking about it outside of a skate and, um, and we, we kind of joke around that Dumbledore is the worst character in the movie. He's actually, I I'll take Voldemort over Dumbledore. Um, you know, uh, he's a fraud, but, um, <laughs> but it's, um, cause Tom Riddle and Harry Potter are the same person with just, a, they had different influences, right? Yep. It's like, yep. well, Dumbledore, if you're the greatest wizard on the world, like how you can, you, you couldn't pick that up in Tom Riddle when he's as a kid. Like, where do you think, like, what do you think Voldemort's doing? Like all he's doing is re- he's revolting against Dumbledore like Mac and a macro and, a, yep. and it, you know, so, but anyways, in, in the pro again, you push them on it. Then all of a sudden it's like, they first say they don't like it. Then it's like, th- then you push, you keep talking about it passionately because you don't care that they may think it. Cause in their mind, it's not cool to like Harry Potter. If you're a hockey player, like right. in their social world, so yeah, yeah. Like, oh, that's too yeah. bad. And I like, keep talking about it with other people. Then, then all of a sudden you find out they have a freaking wall and they've been to Harry Potter world. They have, you know, like <laughs> then they, you find out they love it. But they keep, but they don't. Yeah. They never talk about it. They love yeah. it. So then all of a sudden it's like you. Now all of a sudden you're talking about Harry Potter, and that's okay. Which, yep. which again just opens up. It's a continually uh, breaking. Uh, players compartmentalize, or people in general compartmentalize life in a lot of different boxes that they. It's like all right, when I'm in these settings, I can only use these boxes. And it's like so. Yeah. It's, a, it's a continuation of shattering boxes. To that's make, okay. So that's I mean, what I wanted to ask you because you are hockey. your hockey coach, right? Like. But you're not a hockey coach, right? <laughs> sure. And and I look, I in not unlike any other part of life, but your profession defines how you dress, what you know, what interests you have, how you how you eat, right? How you take care of yourself. Um, yeah. And it, I was at this point in my life where I realized, no, I'm okay being my type of agent advisor, right? And that was like, wow, I don't have to, you know, 
do X, Y, and Z like everyone else does. Right. Like what I have a podcast. I, uh, right. I have a half sleeve. Like you don't. Right. Yeah. That bothered like, me at first. Right. Well, it's, 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 it's such a, it's not such a good point. Cause that, that's a, that's even, I would, it's almost the same thing. That's even uh, more difficult to do it in the sense of, uh, you know, in the sense of, because it's a, there's, you know, a business element. Yep. Elements. like, well, would if if some again it's like the person who looks the most that looks the part the most it's like well why do they have to look so much the part they must not be that good so yeah. it's like in my yeah. so you know so in my mind well, that's, like, what you, that's what you said you wear you know um well, these, these hats like, and the clip on the hats but and well, so I'll people a, think wow well, you're getting great, great clients answer. there must be something there well I'll give you a great answer because uh, people will recognize it's a uh, you know Providence College and I, I spent a year there um, and Nate Lehman. Uh, and I love the guys here. Um, really good relationships with everyone there. That and we that was 18, 19 season. We lost to Duluth and Frozen Four that year. Mm-hmm. Um, and that, that was a bot, that was a great year. But it took the third weekend. You know, I dr- dressed kind of like this. And this is actually for me. It's actually relatively not uh, professional, <laughs> but it's uh, uh, Nate. I'm in a you know one, up in the offices doing video, and uh, Nate walks in and he's like. What size are you in, like, uh, you know, polos, golf polos? I'm like, uh, I was like, I'm a medium. And he's like, I'm like, you know, I'm like, like, what, like, medium. I was like, I'll make anything work. What, like, why? And he's like, be right back. Comes back, throws a, a bundle of poles at me and goes, lose the American Eagle look. <laughs> <laughs> next, next day, I show up with, like, ripped jeans and, like, a Hanley. <laughs> oh, my gosh. But by the end of the year, this is, like, in the playoffs now. He's like, I, I, I had, like, a sweatpants essentially that are like that try to look like uh, dress pants like you know and he's like and to me i thought they they look like dress pants and he's like oh uh what are your, your jeans in the, in the wash <laughs> and, it, and it was kind of to say like as serious as he is because that's his temperament that's his mm-hmm. so it's like that's the thing it's like it's not to say like don't be that way that like he's him like that's how well, that's just it. There's a, I don't know if it's a title of a book or it's in a book, one of these career books, like so good, they can't ignore you, right? Like be so good. They can't ignore you, but it's also be so good that you can just be yourself and right. nothing else really matters. The fluff well, yeah. doesn't matter. Well, cause no, yeah, no, no one can, at that point. It's like, well, we, you know, we broke every single record we could. The, the reason I went there played out exactly uh, more so than it, than it could have. Right. Like, that they're, they're, you know, Nate, you know, when I talked to him before the season, their biggest thing was like, they couldn't get over the hump. They need to sort of essentially execute more. Mm-hmm. And execution goes back to a lot of these things we're talking about because it's like, because it, it, then it, because it comes down to an individual level. So now you have someone that's really down the trench with the individuals. Cause when you're, I mean, you're head coach of a program like that. It's like you, you're running an operation. So there's, yeah. there, there's, you have to have, and this is where I give, I give Nate a ton of credit. No one high there's not many college coaches that would hire Ron Rolson as their assistant. Right. But Nate, that's Nate, Nate cares mo- most about the, the program as a whole. That's like not his, not his ego. That's like, I'm going to bring in a coach that, that is literally like, you know, he'll even say, it's like, well, we're starting to get players that are like a minuses and A's. So we, yeah. need, you know, so he, you bring in Ron Rolston, who's yeah. uh, I would say uh, the brightest hockey mind I've been around Jamie Rice right there, but in a different way. But uh, Jamie a little different because more I would say more on the leadership side because he's a head coach. Ron just just oh ho- hockey wise yeah. unreal. But but it, it's um one when you genuinely care care about people right. So it's like because it's not necessary that I even care to be. It wasn't that I was um, trying to be good for me. It's like I just I genuinely cared about Nate's program because he you know it, it's he you're bringing me into your program so now I'm a part of it. And what do we all want to do? We, we all want to relate, connect, and express. So it's like, well, you're giving me a platform to, to do what I love to do, but with a group towards mm-hmm. common aim, right? And we have a, and we have a, a clear cut schedule that, that is made for, I just have to show up. That's great, yep. right? So it's like, so there's a gratitude there where it's like, when you live that out day to day in the trenches and people really know, like when I, once you know, like I know that they care about me, vice versa, it's like, certain things you don't really care about because you know at the end of the day it's like you know at the end of the day those people are going to um you know that the at the very bottom of it hockey is not important 
if it's like, you know, if it comes down to some, you know, a life thing, right. You know? So it's like, there's, there's a, there's a relationship building component to that. Uh, uh, that's really interesting. Now, now that we're talking about it, where it's because by all accounts, it seems like, you know, people like that do it differently. Oh, you know, they're sort of like a uh, lone wolves or rep, you know, yeah. re- uh, renegade rebels. It's like, no, no, I, I love people. Like yeah. I hate humanity as a whole, but a lot yeah. of individual people. Yeah. But, so it's, there's a, that's, a, I think that's what allows me to even have opportunities because it's like, it's the, it's the relationships that also are so important. Um, Cause otherwise it's like, you know, to go back to the original premise of like, well, what, what is all of this? It's like, well, we're here to love and grow. Yep. So that includes other people. Yeah. Right. So it's, it's at the highest level. I think if you have, if you have the balls to sort of not wear the pole the next day, because you, because yeah. I trust, because I, it's like, eh, don't worry. I, I, yeah. Yeah. Like, no, you know, that's... And then, so that, so it's, there's a, there's a level, if you can get past the first, it's in the same on the ice. I would say if you can withstand the first contact, Mm-hmm. Right? You actually want, like, let's say you're four and have the puck. You want, you want the first contact. You want to be checked because then they've extended. Now they have to recoil, and that's if you can withstand that without being completely thrown off balance. That is when you have a chance to strike. So it's like if you can withstand that first blow and not and not cower and try yeah. and, and continue, then you have a chance. Then yeah, now, and yeah. and compose compose yourself to where you were intending to go. Right, and and this is how I reacted to. Whenever I was young, if I got criticism, right, like, hey, cough, why don't you wear this tomorrow? I'd leave and be like, that motherfucker, yeah. what, what does he mean? Yeah. And then I'd, I'd show up the next day in that, that if I was you at, you know, you were probably what, like 27? Yeah. Um, or, you know, yeah, probably around that age. If, even me at 27, if someone had, I would have listened and I would have been resentful. And I never, so I never got past that first, that first layer, like you said. So, well, Peter I, Russo I was, just uh, just likened getting criticism from a superior what what could be per- perceived as criticism to battling through a check on the ice. So just to show you yeah. how everything is oh, connected. I mean, I, and that's a part of it. I'm, I'm blessed with the level of naivety because it's. I remember the, like the first couple weeks, everyone was looking at me like because I, I would you know I played devil's advocate ad nauseum. Like I, I'm a pain yeah. in the ass, but yeah, but for a purpose, you know. Uh, because it, I, I, I see it being an assistant, part of my job as an assistant is to make the, the coaches better too, not just players, which means <laughs> make them have having to formulate yeah. their thoughts, even though that like, it's like, I know what they're saying that they're right, but just make like really explain it. Cause like, so it's matter. like you're hyper self-aware, but not self-conscious. Right. Like, like right. I don't walk into a room and, and, and see Nate Lehman as Nate Lehman. Like it, it just, I, I don't, I don't know what it is. I just, I can't, I can't fathom uh, status. Like it doesn't like, yeah. it doesn't like phase me. Right. In terms yeah. of how I interact. So That's it's really like, interesting. Yeah. And it's like, and, and the thing is like, I don't say that as like, because I'm, it's like, I, I even think about sometimes like, wait, why aren't I more like nervous? You know, like, yeah. like I, it just doesn't phase me. Um, which is why, you know, cause I, and I was, before I was at Providence, I was a head coach at one of the, <laughs> at Buckingham Brown Nichols, which is a really, you know, uh, there's like 150 CEOs, like kids, at yeah. a really wealthy school. And I, yeah. and it was a, I, but they got the Cambridge thing going on, so they probably just thought they pulled you off the streets in Cambridge, and you're a little <laughs> well, it's, laid it's, back. Well, it was it was a uh, it was a really unconventional hire at the time, and uh, and it was, you know, that to me was, and part of it was, uh, so so I and I did things my way, and I mm-hmm. realized the AD my second year, and we were really like my second year, we had like, but we didn't have enough guys, we didn't have enough players dressed even like really to compete. It was a bad situation my second year. Um, but the AD said to me, he's like, this is the only sport on campus that, which uh, including JVs, everything that has not had a complaint from a parent ever. <laughs> and, we're, and we're, and we're like four and 18. Yeah. And it's like, so th- that's another part of it too. It's like, well, if the kids are, are learning, cause you know, the AD had asked um, a kid on the team whose dad, I think is a doctor uh, at Harvard you know, so, you know, an educated guy. And he's like, honestly, like my, my you know, my, my kids, he's, he's learning and, ha- and having fun. So like, what well, I have nothing to complain about. Cause he kind of asked me like, how's things, you know, going. And, uh, and, and so I, that was a big thing for me. There's that conversation. Cause it was like, well, if you just, if you do things the right way by people, like genuinely, and you really, 
and you're prepared, meaning it's not just shit at the wall. Like, like it's like, yeah, like I show up and it looks like I have no plan because I don't have a whiteboard and I don't have, uh, you know, I don't have like a windsuit on. And it's like, but it's because I've spent hours and hours before I came here uh, doing like doing video studying and then taking time in the, before you get there, kind of like you said before going to the podcast to then let it settle. Yeah. And like, well, and I think, like, you know, you know, time. Hey, what I'm, what I'm aiming at, I, I, I want what I'm aiming at, but I'm not going to sacrifice certain things just to get there. Cause then you're, you'll never get there. Right. Well, my, my aim, because I don't need, my, my aim is the actual performance. So, yep. so it's like, what well, I let go. So, so it's, again, it's like after that point, it's like, once I step, get out of my car, showtime, yep. let go. And then there, then I don't think at all. The reflection comes after yep. I'm detached from it. And it's like, yep. well, look it up, you know, and then I sort of think about what I can, um, where I can fill in some gaps where, what was probably too much, you know, again, timing and proportions is really what you're balancing. Um, but I, you know, I, I've, I fortunately have had opportunities to get to do that at a young age where I would say most people in their twenties, you're usually in a, you're usually in some sort of hierarchy where you have to sort of listen, yep. like, you know, so you don't get to experiment with that. So it's yeah. like, you're given a freaking program. Right. And even when I was at Brooks, like Dave, Dave Reese at Brooks, who's, I mean, the, I, I always can say he, you know, he, he's probably the most important part of my career because he, he gave me out of college, uh, like absolutely no one, nothing on, nothing on my resume. And, you know, we won a large, the large term my first year there, you know, a program of sort of, that was like sort of on the rise, smaller prep school. It's like, he gave me an opportunity that he didn't have to, right? Like a lot of, a lot of people would have taken that assistant job because it's a, it's a great place to start. Right. If, if you want to coach and, but, and he just gave me the, he just trusted me so much to the point where I just like, I was doing hockey stick yoga. I, I was there all the time and I was, I was, I was a volunteer. I, but the thing is, I didn't know I was a volunteer, you know, like it didn't, I can't even fathom that part, which is not always great. Right. So it's like, sure. it, but it's, I would say, so I guess to hockey players listening, if you make your, your aim should be within action, within the action of like, right. So it's like the, now the, the, where you end, where you end up is a byproduct of that anyways. So it's like, if you make your, because it, the problem with, now, and this is where I, I translate sort of like philosophical things into hockey. It's like, well, you have to realize your your domain is action based, right? Like sport. So your aim should be the playing of the sport. Well, well, I think we you hear about these, you know, uh, big, hairy, audacious goals, right? Like, pick a really big goal. Okay, every kid says, I want to play in the NHL. Well, it's really hard to be intentional on a daily basis, you know, on a Tuesday, as you said. Without breaking you can't it into, that goal day to day. Yeah. You can't. Aim, aim small, miss small, right? So um, that's a really, really good point. And I, I wanted to connect to wrap. I wanted to connect it back to one thing that you said that I never really thought of uh, before we started talking about it. But we're always we're always trying to tease out what people learn uh, from adversity, right? As cliche as it sounds, but we always want to we want to dive into the shit. Hey, how'd you feel? How how tough was this for you? How, what'd you learn? Right. Cause without yeah. that, you, there's really nothing to talk about. Right. And you said something earlier, like you said, you can't unclutter nothing. You have to make a mess first. <laughs> yeah. And I, I thought to myself, my parents never cleaned my room. My mom never cleaned my room for me. Like my room got very messy. And then every once in a blue moon, mate, she made me not leave until I cleaned it. Like everything. Right. And you know that feeling when you had a clean room, it, oh, yeah. it becomes a different room. You move some things around. Whereas if the room's clean all the time by, you know, the nanny or the cleaning lady or your parents, you never, your room's always the same. Right. And so when, when I asked you, you know, kid, kids here, people here when we're growing up, Hey, embrace the suck. Well, why? It's like, you have to tell them that other part about right. why it, how your room becomes a different room when it gets shitty and then you clean it up. Well, it's a different room. Because it, cause then you could, you could then make the argument, which that becomes the thing that's applicable is, well, when you clean your room, is it what you really clean with your mind? So it's like, but you don't know that your mind, you don't know that your mind was so disheveled until you clean it. But if there's nothing to clean, then there's no, you need the contrast. Contrast is the best teacher. So it's like, you have to, it's like, you have, it's like, so all the anxiety about the, if, and, uh, 
you know, frustrations that you need that because it's like when it dissipates even a little, well, this, this is different. So what, you know, so that, so now it's, now you're more motivated to make, um, you're more motivated to make conscious decisions that will act in cre uh, clearing, just clearing, clearing. And, and then you trust it will fill. Cause again, if you don't tend to your garden, weeds grow. It's not like it just stays the same. So it's like, you know, it, it's a, it's a constant, it's a constant yin yang of, um, and this is Einstein quote, you know, uh, from, from clutter comes, comes a court. Right. So it's like, throw it all. It's like, if you have, uh, if, in, if you have an hour to solve a problem, spend the first 55 minutes, um, defining the, the, the def defining what the problem is in the last five, uh, solving it. So it's like, throw it all the fuck out there. It's like what, you know, when I, that's why it's like, um, you know, even, even this conversation, it's like, it's, it's not scripted. It's like, let's throw it all out there. And then people, to me, a good, po a good podcast book, anything, it throws it out there and then lets it makes the individual do some work where they have to like be a, really listen and pull out what they need to pull out. Because if they, if they, ha if they're forced to pay attention, cause we don't make it super linear or easy for them, then they forget about themselves. So now they're in the learning state. Otherwise they're not because they're just sort of, because if we make it super easy and that now they're just sort of like following along, like, like on a, like on a, a amusement park uh, ride, that's like, you know, a history thing. Right. So it's like, you have to really, it's like, wait a minute. Like, what, what did he say? Like, I have to, you know, you really have to dial it in. Cause like now, and now you're playing the game we're playing at the same time. So we're giving a gift. We're giving, an, we're giving out something you can use to, as a, as a platform to, from clutter, create a chord. Make some make sense of, of it for you, and that and then that will evolve. So we need to give people th those sorts of things in, in our society. It's it's hard to come by because we don't see the process behind things. So we assume if there is one, then we must not be very good at it. But that's not you know. So so kids don't even try because it's like well, what you're you know because we don't see it. So that's why I, I think doing this sort of this sort of thing, just being. And it's, it's not like being vulnerable. It's just being what it is. Like we're just talking as human beings. Cause no matter what, you, that's, at the end of the day, we're all human beings. So it's like, no, that's, that's it. Cause I, it's, I thought that to myself, like, geez, I'm really kind of opening up here. Yeah. Um, but that's why I think, what do you think? Could, could this go viral or what? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, man. Well, it's, it's a funny thing. It's a, uh, that's where my na naivety kicks in. I can't, I, I have no, I, yeah. I don't even know what I, I couldn't even. Yeah, no, I mean, I always go back. I say, I've said this quite a few times. Like, I don't even care if no one listens to these podcasts because I get so much out of it. And after this one, I don't know if I need to go take a nap or go work out. So I think that's how you know I'm energized. Well, I'm, I'm I'm advice tired. I've stretched well it. there is a process of now, and this is a more technical part um, that I use with players and myself, and, and, and you can use this as well. Everyone can. With things like this, where it's you're learning, but it's not quite necessary something very, very specific. Yeah. It's actually best. So after, the, you know, so like for instance, like after, let's say, let's say we were, you were a client and we're talking, I would say after this phone call, it's like, don't try to understand it. No. Right. It's like, just, just sort of like actually get away from it and like just decompress. And then mm -hmm. what will happen is the, a good lesson that you're right. You, it becomes a, it becomes something living that moves forward with you. It's not something that ends. So it should actually, so then if you let it seep in how it should by, by, by sort of just trusting that if you did pay attention, if you pay attention and tell the truth, you never have to remember anything in your life. So it's uh, in all of a sudden it's like something will happen in your life. And even in our first conversation that happened with me, it's like, where then it's like, Oh, Oh yeah. Like that makes you start pulling things from when you were in the learning state because your subconscious is now, sucking that in you don't know it though because it's subconscious so now now you think you don't remember it because it, it's only useful when when you need it so when you need it it comes up so it's like so if you trust that process but to trust that process you have to understand that that's what the process that that is right. how the human brain works yeah so and that's why that's why there is exponential growth because right it, it really does build right so it, it's it like really does. Not, you don't have, it's like we don't have to try super hard to digest this it. like mm -hmm. our brain will do it for us if we get the hell out of the way Man. Right. So it's like unreal. Unreal. Well, that was awesome. We'll we'll see if uh <laughs> if Ryan and George can can uh pick up what we're putting down and then and I'll have them digest this and then we'll talk about it and we'll uh post it out to the, the interweb. Yeah. But this has been awesome, man. I really enjoy this chat. Me as well. Me, me I did too. forget we were recording. So it's, no, it's always a pleasure to have these types of conversations. This is great. Skills, forget about X's rules. It's a mindset of believing. It's amazing what can happen. So you stand in there.
You stand in there and you don't take a backward step. Not break. Second. Face up. Break. Come to the stand. Break. Face to face with a pink hole. Break. Do it. There is no one taking a back step here. Right up here.